Hello humans, I'm Yo Schiller, and welcome back to some more Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS. In this part of this walkthrough, I should be playing through classic mode as Mr. Game and Watch. So each of his color costumes changes his color completely. It's not just like changing one part of him, no, it completely changes his color. The costume I should be using though is this one, because it changes his outline color. So Mr. Game Watch is a completely black character and uh, I also I should be playing this on 7.0 intensity because I suck with Mr. Game & Watch. So Mr. Game & Watch is a completely black character because it's supposed to be paying homage to the Game & Watch, which was a little gaming system that you could wear on your wrist because it was a game and a watch. It was a very interesting idea game thing that came out in, I believe, 1980. Mr. Game & Watch is this little character here that's used to represent the entire game system. Also in reference to the actual game system, his animations are very, very choppy. And he's also a completely two-dimensional character. Like, if I were to pause this game right now, which I'm not going to, he would be completely flat. Oh, man, okay. As for his attacks himself, all of Mr. Game Watch's attacks are references to games that could be purchased on a Game & Watch. Every Game & Watch was only one game. Or may maybe some had two games on it, but it, it it was like one game or two games per system. Each of Game Watch's attacks reference each of those games. So like, uh, Game Watch's up special is, is a is a trampoline that references a game I believe that was just called Trampoline. Okay, Little Mac has Daybreak. That's gonna hurt. Oh, okay, that's probably gonna kill me. Yep, I'm out. This Little Mac CPU is destroying me. Darn it! I don't want to lose in the first match. That's that's really embarrassing. Come on, you. Alright, now I don't know what all of Mr. Game & Watch's attacks are from. I know they're all from Game & Watch games, but I couldn't tell you every single game. Uh, but his attacks are very, very interesting. And you might have noticed during that battle, I kept trying to use this hammer attack. That hammer attack is his side B, his side special. And it randomly generates a number between 1 and 9, and each number has a different effect. 1 pretty much does nothing, whereas 9 is an instant KO attack. And every time you use the hammer attack, if it's a 9, you'll hear Mr. Game Watch go and like electricity will shoot out. So you want to land that to the best of your ability. See here, I'm using the hammer now. And you never really know what number it's going to get, so you just have to keep using it. Additionally, Mr. Game & Watch, ooh, there we go, I got an 8. Awesome. Mr. Game & Watch does not talk. I mean, a lot of characters in this game don't talk. Darn it, really, I'm just getting destroyed in all these matches. I mean, I'm thankful that I won the previous match, but man. Mr. Game & Watch does not talk. He only beeps and he boops. He makes sound effect. He makes sound effects that are from the Game & Watch. Okay, Ugh. Oh, okay, that wasn't me. I, I keep losing track of myself. I thought going as a white Game & Watch would help me keep better keep track of myself. Okay, let me take care of the Samus real quickly. I'll talk more about Mr. Game & Watch in a second. I really need to focus more on this stuff. Oh, I've got a gun! Come on now. No, 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 no. Okay. Now, another quick thing. While I don't main Mr. Game & Watch, I believe with every Super Smash Bros. game, Mr. Game & Watch has gotten progressively better. For instance, in Super Smash Bros. Melee, where Mr. Game & Watch was first playable. There you go, I won, hooray. When Mr. Game & Watch was first playable, he wasn't too good of a character. Whereas in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, they made his attacks deal more damage and his recovery became much better. In this game, I don't know the differences too well. Maybe his attacks deal even more damage. But I'm pretty sure he's better than he is in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Hopefully, <laughs> that's correct. Okay, going up against a giant fox with Falco as my partner. We're going to Corneria, which is a stage that is from Super Smash Bros. Me Wait, well, actually, Ready? it's based on a on a on a place from Star Fox. But the stage itself, this stage is not new to Super Smash Bros. It is from Super Smash Bros. Melee. Okay, I would love to land a nine hammer on him. Darn it! Come on. Nope. Nope. Come on. Come on. Nope. Okay, come on. In due time, I would love to land a 9 because it is an instant KO and using it on a giant character makes it easier to hit. Nope. Come on. Oh, see there! There's the 9 and of course I missed. Whatever. Alright. You. Darn it! There's another 9! Come on! Alright, what's this? Help me out here. Hammer Brother! Cool. Hammer Brother is an assist trophy. He is from the Super Mario franchise. He acts as an enemy in that game. Alright. I'm gonna get some Daybreak parts. Daybreak parts! Uh, these items are in reference to Kid Icarus Uprising. Ooh, ooh, okay, never mind, I just died. I don't need to talk about Daybreak Parks. Daybreak Parts, I just died. Yeah, never go underneath the stage because that blaster will shoot you if you're in front of it. And 
If it shoots you, you're you're you're, you're just done for. Thankfully, I have two lives in this, and Fox died in the process, so that's pretty nice. All right, this is the free for all, right? Yep, free for all between Mega Man Villager and Rosalina on Dr. Wily's castle. All right, that should be doable. That should be doable. Okay. I haven't been doing too well as Mr. Game & Watch, but I haven't lost yet, so that's a plus. So, so far, so decent, I suppose. Okay. So, as you can see, Mr. Game & Watch has a bunch of different attacks, but because his animations are choppy, the hitboxes on them are a little weird. Like, the, the attacks will only have about two frames of animation, but the actual attack will last for about maybe five to ten frames of animation, if that makes sense. It's like two poses, and that acts as, a, as an attack. I, does that make any sense? I don't know. I hope it does. His animations are choppy, making it hard to know when your attack is going to hit. I'm sure, you know, great players will always know when Mr. Game Watch's attacks are going to hit, but I, 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 you know, I suck with Mr. Game Watch. He is a fun character to use, don't get me wrong. He is a very fun addition to Super Smash Brothers. There you go. Goodbye, Rosalina. Yeah, I, I think he is stronger this time around. Come on. Yes, I've got a chair. Don't mess with me. Oh, oh, Mega Man, dude. I'll give you credit, that was nice, but that was mean. All right. This yellow devil boss that of me is getting on my nerve. Ooh, there's a bob on beside that. I'm gonna stay away from that. I'm gonna go over here. And I'm gonna get out of here. Okay, here we go. He's gotta take care of Mega Man. He needs that 144%. Get out of here. There you go. Oh, by the way, okay, Mr. Game and Watch's taunts, okay? So earlier I was saying how Mr. Game and Watch can only go beep and boop. You know, he makes a bunch of beeping sound effects. His taunts are, two of his taunts involve him ringing a bell, and his third taunt just involves him jumping. Both of those bells, okay, they make these really loud beeping noises. And back in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, when I used to play online, all the time people would just spam that bell sound effect. They would just go, over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And it was so annoying. And for that reason, while I had nothing against Mr. Game & Watch himself, Mr. Game & Watch became, I guess, my most hated character in Super Smash Bros. Again, I have nothing against the character, and I have nothing against people that play him. That is, unless you're going online and people just spam his freaking taunts. <laughs> so for that reason, I didn't really like Mr. I didn't really like it when people played as Mr. Game & Watch. Okay, if they weren't gonna spam the taunt, you know, that's fine. But people spam the taunt all the time, and, you know, I'm not against people taunting. It's just that, which Mr. Game & Watch's taunts are really, really bothersome. And so, if people were to ask me, what's your least favorite character in Super Smash Bros. Brawl? I guess it'd have to be Mr. Game & Watch, just because people are so annoying with him. But I have nothing against the guy himself. I think he's really fun. I just figured I'd point that out, and thankfully I won that battle. I'm going flying. All right. Now, all that remains is the final part of Classic Mode here, which is my battle against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. Now, this is 7.0 intensity, so this shouldn't be too difficult. But alas, like I've been saying throughout the entirety of this part, I suck as Mr. Game Watch. Like, all those battles, something ridiculous has happened to me, and I almost died. Okay, there we go. A bunch of coins. That'll, that'll suffice. Okay. So, Mr. Game & Watch. Yeah! All right, Master Hand and Crazy Hand. I don't really know what the best attack to use you to use against you as Mr. Game and Watch is, but I'm gonna guess that I just I'm just gonna you know what? I'm just gonna keep striking against him. Okay, I don't know if there is the best. Ooh, actually, that might be a good idea. Ooh, okay, I was trying to use Mr. Game and Watch's down B there. His down B is him holding out a bucket, and if you get hit with projectile attacks, they'll be absorbed into your bucket, and you can fill up the bucket. And when the bucket gets full, if you push down B again, you'll you'll throw an oil spill. And the oil spill deal, deals a ton of damage. So just a quick bit of information in case you ever plan to use Mr. Game & Watch. Yeah, so he's got a powerful hammer that randomizes numbers. His down B can absorb projectiles for a limited time. His up B is a parachute. His regular B involves him throwing bacon at people. There you go. There's a there's a 9. How do you like that? Okay. I have to take care of this sword. And I always suck against this shadowy sword segment. I'm just going to keep using this attack. I don't think it's doing a whole lot. Oof. I'm okay. I'm okay. That's the surprising part, guys. I am actually okay. All right, well, maybe not so much anymore. Come on. Come on. I've been doing so well on the other phases now. 
Uh, okay, this is the phase that usually gets me. <laughs> okay, how do you like that? Okay, now I have to find a shadowy version of myself, which pretty much just looks like Mr. Game and Watch, with with little black dust coming out. Oh, he's throwing the he's throwing the bacon at me. He's tossing the flapjacks at me, but I shan't allow it. Come here, you. Come on. Ugh. There you go. Mr. Game and Watch's down air attack is usually pretty good. It involves him slamming toward the ground with a key. I would advise using that attack a lot if you're in the air. It's it's very safe. There you go. Oh, that didn't kill you. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, oh, nope, the hammers. And not the side special hammer. I mean his his down smash. His down smash involves him pulling out two hammers and slamming against the ground. That attack can also hurt. Oh, there's that key. I told you, that key is very, very strong. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Get your beeps and your boops away from me, you faker. Ah, oh, okay, whatever. I have died, but that's okay. I can still defeat this fake game and watch. Oh. Come on now. Oh, he's juggling me. <laughs> but I am successful in this fight. Hooray. I am victorious. I think that's what I meant to say. Yeah, I'm gonna taunt. Okay, hang on. I gotta I gotta finish this off with a nine hammer. Come on. There you go. Oh, I didn't finish it. Okay, let's try that again. Come on. Okay, six is fire, eight is ice, nine is insta KO. Come on, nine again. There you go. Goodbye. Have a nice day. And that is the Master Core defeated, and that is Classic Mode with Mr. Game & Watch. Now, I apologize for any sloppy gameplay, but hey, I didn't lose to Master Hand and Crazy Hand, and Mr. Game & Watch isn't my main. So for me, just randomly going in as Mr. Game & Watch and winning, I think that I did a rather decent job, if I should say so myself. But there you go. Now I can add Mr. Game & Watch to my collection of trophies in this game. Okay, time for the credits. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna fly on through these. Here, Mr. Game Watch's annoying taunts that I keep speaking about. Oh, oh, that taunt is different. Normally, Mr. Game Watch's taunt involves him either ringing a bell or jumping slightly, but they changed it. Now he sits down and blows a puff of air. And then here are all of Mr. Game Watch's other attacks. There you go. Yep. Hang on, where was that? Okay, whatever. That's all good. Anyway, flying through the credits. I am done with Mr. Game and Watch. And of course, I have to fight a newcomer, right? <laughs> Alright, interesting. I'll explain why that's interesting in a moment. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Alright! This is Rob, or as he's known in Japan, he is known as Robot. He is a very interesting character. I'm not just talking about an interesting character in Super Smash Brothers. Like, overall, he's a very interesting character because he's never really been in a game. Okay, let me rephrase. He's been in Super Smash Brothers before. He's, he was in Super Smash Brothers Brawl and he was playable in Mario Kart DS. But he's never really had his own game. He was actually an accessory. He was a toy used to play two other games. Hang on, here we go. Ooh, did I just catch that? You can have that. That's a yeah. So that attack is his gyro. Miss Rob was a toy. He acted as a se he acted as a second player for two games. One was called Gyromite, and the other one was called Stack Up. These were both old NES games. And in those games, he would move. Oh, I shoot! I was too busy talking about Rob here that I died. But let me show you something. This is actually a good opportunity for me to show something. If you ever play through Classic Mode and you're fighting a character that you can unlock and you lose, you can always do this. If you lose. Go play a regular Smash match, okay? For the sake of this, I'm just gonna play as Mr. Game and Watch, because he is the focus of this part, okay? Uh, and then you just play a quick versus match. That's all you have to do. After the versus match is over, you will fight the same character that you just fought. Or rather, you will fight the same locked character that you just fought. Oh, I love this stage so much, but alas, I have to end this battle. Oh, it's a time match. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, let me just end it. Any of you just end it like this. Um, it'll still count as you having played a match. Watch, uh, Rob should show up in just a moment. Okay, here we go. So here's why I was saying that Rob was interesting, okay? I, he's, he's an interesting character, he has an interesting history, okay? But the thing that makes this interesting is that, technically speaking, in this game, Rob is supposed to be the last character that you unlock, okay? There is one more character that I have to unlock after this, and I'm pretty sure most people that are fans of Super Smash Bros. would be able to guess what that is. 
you can unlock Rob by playing through classic mode a bunch of times, I guess. Or by playing 120 versus matches, which is more versus matches that are required to unlock a character than any other character. Okay, Rob requires the most amount of versus matches to be played, to be unlocked. Whereas the one character I'm missing requires the fewest. That said, if, if you accidentally skip a locked character... So here, here, let me put this into perspective. I'm trying to talk about this while I'm fighting, and it's kind of difficult. Let's say there's 15 characters you have to unlock in this game, okay? If there are 15 characters that you have to unlock, you unlock one of them. Oh, I just won. Sweet. Speaking of unlocking a character, I just unlocked Rob. But yeah, if there's 15 characters, you unlock the first one, you unlock the second one, you unlock the third one. And let's say you're about to unlock the fourth one, but you skip out on it. You'll immediately skip to the fifth character, and you won't unlock that fourth character until you've unlocked everybody else. And I still have one more character that I have to unlock. I'm just letting you guys know that now. I hope that makes sense. Okay, anyway, that wraps up this part of Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. See you all next time in the next part when I clear classic mode with yet another character. Bye-bye, humans.